Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. This is one of those few times where I have no idea what we're going to talk about. But let me, let me, let me change that. I have an idea of what we're going to talk about, but I don't know the end result. And it's something related to the eternal source of power, which could be a, a game changer in your life. Anna Dieter is here, and she's from livestutterfree.com. We're going to find out what this eternal source of power is. We should be knowing this, and we're going to reveal that in just a moment. Anna, welcome back. How are you? Thank you so much for having me back. I am great, Stephen. And yes, there is eternal source of power that people must know about. It's a big mystery. You know, people go to the store, people buy drugs, people go and do exercises. People think that there are many, many things that can bring them power, which is true, of course. But there is one source of power that we have, we all have it, and it is widely available. And uh, why? May I take a guess? May I take a guess? Or do you want to? Of course, of course. And now I'm going to tie this into what you do, and that is help people live stutter free. Those yes. who cannot or have challenges. And this is, there's so many people in that category that can't freely express themselves or lack confidence when they speak. So I'm just, I'm going to throw this out here. The eternal source of power is your voice. <laughs> no. Okay. That's a great wild guess, but the answer is no. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I had to, I had to but, find out. Plus I wanted to explain what you do. Okay. Okay. But of course I want to mention to our listeners that I'm very much into helping people to overcome any difficulty with their oral self-expression. So any speaking difficulty, it doesn't matter what we strange people call all these difficulties. We come up with all kinds of medical terms, but it doesn't matter what you call it. If you make mistakes when you speak, it means you simply haven't learned to say words in the language you are speaking with accuracy and ease. It doesn't matter what language you speak because you have one speech instrument. No matter what languages we speak, we all use this speech instrument in the same way if you have learned to use this instrument correctly. Well, and I have, question. I have a question as we go along here, and we haven't revealed the eternal source of power yet, but you just said make mistakes when speaking. Everybody has a different view of what a mistake is when we're speaking. How would you define that, Anna? It's so simple. When people speak, we transfer the words, let's say from our mind to our tongue. So we share words with people, words. And what's very important that it is every word is standard, standard word. It never changes. So if the word is a pen, then it's not going to sound in any other way in English language. It is going to sound a pen. It's a standard melody. Okay. So if a person speaks and this person says a pen, this is normal speaking, normal speech, easy, accurate. But if you have difficulty saying the simple word, a pen, then there is a problem. <laughs> you do have a problem, right? So normal speaking means saying words with accuracy, 100% accuracy and ease and saying only words. No other useless vocalizations. This is normal speaking. However, no one is teaching our children to do so. This is why children don't know how to do it most of the time. I mean, most of the time they do know because they do it naturally, train their tongue to produce these words. But when there is any difficult difficulty, any mistake, 
saying the word accurately. We people call it medical terms, stuttering, stammering, cluttering, mm. stumbling, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so this is a mistake. Mistake in speaking is when you don't say the word in a standard way, period. Or you say something else but the word. Okay, okay. I was just going to go to that. Is it, in your view, a mistake when somebody is speaking and they pause for a moment and they say, um, and then they get back to it? Would you? Yes. That's a mistake. Of course, it is a mistake because the moment you go, ah, you don't give people the word that they are expecting to receive from you. Hmm. We talked about it. Of course, if you kind of use it, the word, I mean, the ah, as a word, ah, 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 you express your emotion and it's meaningful at the moment, meaningless, meaningful, meaningful. <laughs> Okay, then it's the word. Okay, and then it makes sense. It's not a mistake. But if you go like, uh, uh, you don't know what to say, then we talked about it. Instead of making all kinds of weird vocalizations, take time. In silence, select what is the word you want to say. But let's go to the topic I truly wanted to discuss today, if I may. Absolutely. The eternal source of power that is within yes. us, right? Yeah. So yeah. this is the question I want to ask you. So, you know, in today's world, people are always talking about the rights. So many rights. I am a human being. I have human rights. Don't kind of violate my human rights. And I am here to tell you that there is only one right all living creatures on the planet have, including us, people. And guess what it is? One birthright, no other rights. <laughs> Little... Lots of different directions, so I'm, I'm not totally sure. I like the answer. Kind of diplomatic. Mm. Okay. <laughs> it's very simple. There is only one human right, birthright, it's called the free will. The right of free choice at each and every mo moment of our life. We are all born perfect. And Mother Nature, God, has given us the choice, freedom to choose what we want to do each and every single moment. And this is the eternal source of energy, our desire, our intention, our wish. What is it we want at each present moment? If I want to speak, I will speak. If I want to think about speaking, I will not be able to speak. I will be thinking about speaking. If I want, look at other people, see what they're doing, think what they may think of me. I won't be able to speak again at this moment. This is all tied together, okay, with what we talked previously about. But it is the source of eternal energy for everyone. Every living creature on the planet is our desire at this moment, what we want to do. And we do exactly what we want to do, always, everywhere. Makes you think for a second, Anna, because, and, and I agree with you, and those times where you can't do what you want to do, you should analyze it and decide why. Is it somebody else controlling you or putting a boundary on you? And more times than not, you're allowing them to do that. But back to your point of the eternal source of power and your free will, the next word coming out of your mouth, my mouth, that's our choice. What we're having for lunch today, that's our choice. What we're going to do in the next 15 minutes, that's our choice. Exactly. You got my idea, of course. 
So everything. And of course, when we people make bad choices, we tend to blame situations, other people, circumstances. La, 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 it's not my fault. It's because I was here and there. I'm sorry. And who made a choice to be there? <laughs> who made that choice? And it's close, very closely related to the work I do today with people who stutter. <clears throat> and I wanted to also explain because... I've been helping people who start for already 10 years, over 10 years. And I have a lot of, of course, experience dealing with this category of people. Of course, they are normal people, just like you and me. They are born normal, but they keep making wrong choices. Wrong choices. They're very confused people. They may don't like what they hear when I say that, but this is reality. If you make a bad choice, you are going to follow the choice. It's your desire. And of course, unfortunately, conventional practitioners, they are also not helping. Okay, because when a person comes to a speech therapist, for example, speech therapist, teach them to go and use all kinds of artificial techniques for speaking. And people who start to want to do it, try to do it, and they stumble because it's abnormal. So this is why today I've decided to give you like two short, I mean, short, that compare two short stories, if I may. I hope I have time for that. But it's very interesting to make the point that people do exactly what they want to do. And depending on their choices in life, they get totally different results. The starting point is the same. But their choices are different. And that's why they start from really kind of the bottom. They really were in a hard situation. In my case, they both were my students and they both were severe stutterers. Severe. Very close age, but different life situations. And I want to talk about it because this is a perfect example for those who still believe they are sick and they cannot speak, that this is a life sentence, that they need some cure or someone to treat them and it's not their fault and stuff like that. Before, so before you get into your stories, I want to remind everyone, if you want to reach out to us, instantfeedbacksteve at gmail.com. Or you can call us 631-319-6275, 631-319-6275. And we're talking with Anna Dieter, who helps so many people not stutter, change their life, give them confidence when they speak at livestutterfree.com. So back to Anna. I just wanted to throw that in there. Thank you so much. Because when I begin talking, I forget about advertisement and marketing. I don't remember. <laughs> well, that, that's fine. I just want to make sure that people can. my choice. <laughs> yes. That, we just that. do our choices, right? This that's is your choice. choice, your job. So back to my story. I want to talk about two students, very close age. One student is the poster boy of my book. One Lonely Climb to Success. His name is Hussein. He was born in Saudi Arabia, refugee camp. And he was three years old when the family escaped this horrible situation during the war in Iran or Iraq, whatever. So, and they settled down in Finland. He was placed in a school for mentally retarded children because he still, at three years old, he still couldn't speak. And they diagnosed him with stuttering. So this is the situation. Hussein came to me. He didn't speak English. He came to me through Facebook Messenger and used Google Translate to just get to me, get in touch with me. Okay? So, and here is another student I'm going to talk right away. This person lives in Canada in a pretty affluent family. Okay, everything is has been given to him on a silver plate. He didn't have to do much in his life. So the first one, Hussein, at 18 years old when he came to me, had nothing. The family of immigrants, 
struggling to make money to just live, to feed their children. No English language. And here is another person, close age, a little older even than Hussein. Okay, he was like, let's call him Johnny. He was 24 years old or something else. Yes. We're going to have to, I'm going to press the pause button. I don't mean to cut you off, but we do have a call. So, oh, cool. This is more important. Yeah. Let's go to Detroit. Hi, who's this? Hi, my name is Ann. Ann. We have Ann. That's a good name. <laughs> Anna, that's a good name. Uh, yes, Anna is here. Uh, do you have a question for her? Uh, yeah, actually, I do. Um, when I rehearse what I want to say, I'm fine. Uh, but when I don't or have something written out uh, or rehearsed, I pause and say, uh, a lot. Is there any way to stop that? Of course. You need to know what is it that you are rehearsing. I don't know what you are rehearsing. Are you rehearsing 100 words or one word? Um, it's like a paragraph. A paragraph, okay. So you have one tongue, right, in your mouth. <laughs> so <laughs> how many times can you move your tongue at one time? One time. One time. At one moment, that's what I wanted to ask. You can move your tongue only once. So the most thing you can make with your tongue is the word, if the tongue has already been trained, okay? So when you rehearse, if you have rehearsed a whole paragraph, it's like a poem. Then it's fine. Again, it depends how many times you have rehearsed, right? So right. this is good. So if you have rehearsed a poem and you recite the poem in the same way without changing the order of the words, in your memory, it kind of becomes one word. Then it's fine. You will never, ever interject anything. But if you are interjecting your ahs, it means you still don't remember it as one word. Are you understanding me? Yes, mm. yes. So my recommendation, if you truly want to rehearse a paragraph, do what all actors do. Actors, you know how they learn the scripts? How's that? They sit down and they memorize portion by portion. Johnny went to the forest. Johnny went to the forest. Johnny went to the forest and saw a wolf. Johnny went to the forest and saw a wolf. They kind of use the method of adding little pieces, little portions of information, but they rehearse it, putting it kind of together in a sequence. This is what rehearsal, right rehearsal is. And I actually teach this in my class. I call it the presentation mode. Wow. When we truly memorize we can memorize a whole paragraph, but if you did just, you read something, you close the book, you said it one time and you decide, okay, I know it. But if you interject, ah, it means you don't know it yet. Right. And okay. The simple recommendation, don't even attempt to grab a whole paragraph. What for? <laughs> Why? Make it so difficult for yourself. Do it word plus word plus word. This is the natural way how we speak. How parrots speak. We say one word, then we select the next word in silence. Then the next one, then the next one. And at the end, we're going to end up saying the whole paragraph. Interesting. Wow. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. Honestly, I... I can't wait to try that the next time I have to memorize something where I'm speaking somewhere to do it in pieces where it almost sounds, Anna, like you're talking about taking it in sections, you know, <laughs> let's say four words, memorize it onto the next four words and then put it all together. The thing is that I realize that our memory, it's like computer's memory. It's limited. See, paragraph is not for our memory. It's not suitable for our memory. We can remember only a word, 
then plus word, then plus word. Okay, people do speak in short verbal phrases because again, they've memorized it with their tongue. They've done it tons of times. They have done, have repeated these phrases a lot of the time. And that's how it sounds like, oh my God, a person speaks in phrases and sentences. This is all incorrect. <laughs> we don't speak in long sentences. As a matter of fact, when we begin the sentence, we have no idea what we're going to end this sentence with. Okay. I have to think about that, but I, I'm, I'm on your page and I'm a big proponent <laughs> of, of short. Like even when I'm typing an email, put periods in, don't run on sentences or just, it gets confusing. Uh, and thank you very much for calling us. Thank you so much. And of course, if you have more questions, just communicate with me directly. It's so simple. Livestartoffree.com. It's I am available in all the social media. I answer questions right and left all the time. Thank you for joining me. Thank you. All right. So we're going to get back to your story about two people coming from different walks of life. One of them from Saudi Arabia was born in a camp. And then we have somebody from Canada who basically had the silver spoon in their mouth, had everything they needed. Yeah. So what I'm saying is that the base, the ground was the same. They didn't learn to speak. Different reasons, of course. Mm -hmm. For this child born during the war, of course, nobody cared whether he was speaking or not. And there were bombs around and he was scared of doing anything, playing basically the speech instrument. <laughs> in order to play music on your speech instrument, you gotta be in the mood for doing this, right? So the same start, but then the way they came to me, contacted me, the poor guy contacted me, he found the way to contact me. He communicated with me through Google Translate. He wrote to me back and forth, we were communicating with him. I didn't even know he didn't know English because he was receiving my messages, re uh, translating these messages in Google Translate, writing back to me through this app. The other guy was uh, finally was able, he was writing to me because English is his first language. And then when we get together, finally, he called his family member, his brother, to explain his problem. He didn't even try to speak. He was sitting in front of me like this. <sighs> he used his tongue as a gag. <laughs> okay. He couldn't speak at all, period. It was zero communication skills, zero speaking skills, really bad. And the other guy was also pretty basic. Okay. Another point I want to mention is how they reacted to the information that they received from me. What is it that you need to do in order to fix your speech? In only three days, what is it that you need to do? My recommendation for both, I mean, for the guy, the poor guy for Hussein was, you got to learn English language. I don't speak in Arabic language or in Finnish language because he did. I mean, he does live in Finland now. Okay. You got to learn English. The other guy didn't have that problem. And you also need to invest. The investment is pretty high. It's your life. You need to become free. So the reaction, the guy in Finland who didn't even know English language, he started learning English language. He found the free app. He bought and read the first book in his life. It was book in English language, my book. Wow. <laughs> my book. He learned English by reading my book. He followed my instructions just like this. I would tell him what to do and he would do it. And guess what? It's all in this book. Our conversation is in this book, One Lonely Climb to Success. Now check out the, the reaction of the other guy. He had the whole family work for him, the whole family. His father paid for the class, invested for his in his education. And by the way, what Hussein did, 
he got a job, he earned $6,000 by himself. And it was like seven, eight years ago when no one had internet businesses online. I mean, no one yet, and people didn't even trust internet schools, right? So the reaction was totally different right away from start. One person had a burning desire and he started, this desire gave him amazing power. He went through hell. He got a job. He got fired. He wrote to me, I'm going to kill myself. I can't do it anymore. My person, like employer is such a bad guy. I'm like, you want to kill yourself because your employer is bad? Oh, you know what? You're right. I got to get another job. <laughs> okay. So the bottom line, the reaction was totally different. The desire was not as burning in the affluent guy. Wow. It was okay. No, I mean, everyone was doing everything for him. Okay. And here is the result. The results were totally different. That young kid, 18 year old kid, when he came to me, of course, he was already 20, 21, I believe, or 20. Okay. So, and instant results, three day success. And today he is a manager of the factory where I guided him to get a job at and earn money. He's a big boss. He makes a lot of money. The other student, he graduated a year ago and he disappeared from my life. I didn't know what he was doing. He had exactly instructions what to do. He started and he dropped it. He stopped working. Okay, stopped it. And guess what? A year, I mean, a few days ago, he contacted me. I'm like, where are you? Why didn't you continue your work? I don't know. Did you do this? I don't know. Do you see what I mean? Yeah. No desire, no power to fix your life. You got to no. want it. You got to want it. And we're we're actually out of time. Ah. But we have instant feedback coming from Tara in New Haven, Connecticut. She says, thank you for your talk about free will. Many of us gravitate toward the role of victim and yes. we blame others. Ultimately, most often, it's our choice to be a victim or not. I just wanted to share that with you, she says. Thank you so much. Thank you. That was absolutely, if I had more time, we can continue talking about it next week because yeah. it's a very interesting topic, not just for those who start, but for everyone. Because yes. can, I, can I just quickly mention one thing? I walked on the beach today. I met people standing church people, you know how they have their brochures everywhere. And I grabbed this brochure. Can you see it? I do. I mean, people who are listening, I'm going to just tell. There is a picture of a woman crying with a tear rolling down her cheek. And it says, five questions about suffering answered. People suffer and they don't even realize why they suffer. Because they believe God loves me. No, you got to love yourself first because God doesn't have any other hands but ours. God doesn't have other tongues but our tongue. Interesting thought. And is suffering real? I had a conversation with somebody recently about that. You know, that's another it is real. Yeah, okay. We, uh -huh. I have so much to share with the world. Guys, Please join me next Friday. What time? 10.30, right? 10.30. <laughs> Please, I would love yeah. to talk about it because what I know is very, very unique. It's coming from, I'll tell you next week where it's coming from. <laughs> talk today. Yeah. And uh, good feedback from everybody. If you want to reach out to Anna, Thank you. Uh, just to voice your opinion, or if you want to live stutter free or speak clearly and have more confidence and really move your life forward, live stutterfree.com. Anna, great having you on and uh, look forward to next week. Thank you so much, Stephen. See you next week. Thank you. We'll be right back. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network.